So after owning the XM2s for the longest of time and now rocking the AirPods Max, I figured it would be a good time to review the XM4s and answer the following questions. How good are they? How much better are they compared to the older model? What makes them the king of noise cancelling? Are they as good sounding as they are good at separating you from your surroundings? Etc. Etc. In this video we will go over the improvements over the older model, the new sensors and of course sound quality as well as comfort, multi-device support and lots more. Let me start with an upfront conclusion and in the meantime feel free to roam around the video using the provided timestamps. In short. The XM4s are great headphones, but I do feel they are overhyped. Now they are excellent at noise cancelling, which is perhaps their number one selling point, but I don't think they are exceptional sounding nor as comfortable as I wanted them to be. Comfort is of course subjective, but even other people around me come to the same conclusion that although light, the clamping force in the ears may bring discomfort over longer use. Now don't get me wrong, they sound great and are a lot of fun to listen to. But as with my older pair, I wouldn't resort to them if I was looking for accuracy. I would grab them anytime I want to space out from all the noise and I would take them if I was traveling and I think that is still what makes them unique. The combination of proven recipe for durability, complete and compact package, battery life and all around knowing what to expect performance. So now let's dig deeper. <laughs> Hey guys, this is EE and if you're new to the channel, welcome. My name is Iskren and most people call me EE and let's start with what's new and improved. First off, we have larger cushions and an upgraded softer headband. The champagne color is a bit muted compared to my old pair which makes it easy to see the difference between the models. The color is a bit more neutral, a bit more grey and maybe a bit more cheap looking and boring if you ask me, but it does make the headphones fit better on any setup. There's less shiny coating and everything is matte and overall cleaned up here and there. Personally, I would go for the matte black color with copper accents. I think it looks wonderful. The cushions are soft, providing great padding and the headband is improved as well this time around. Just as before, the headphones can collapse to take less space in the case. Overall, these headphones are very light. More noticeable here, however, is the USB-C charging port and the well-improved tactile buttons. Where the older model was difficult to use and find the flush buttons, this one is a lot easier to work with because I can now feel what I want to press. With the XM4, we also have new sensors and 5 new microphones which should help with noise cancelling and call quality. With the new proximity sensor, these headphones will now automatically pause once you take them off and will fall asleep after a while which is important. In all fairness, this proximity sensor doesn't always work. For it to work properly, you have to take them off the decor away. You know, quick removal and using non-traditional tactics sometimes may not trigger the pause functionality. It is better than the old model however, which would stay on unless I specifically turn them off which by itself is a slow process and more often than not, especially if I get interrupted, they would stay on until they run out of battery. Aside from the improved buttons, we still have touch sensitive right ear cup, providing tapping for assistant trigger and something that Sony calls quick attention. Basically, as soon as you put your hand on the cup, the music fades away, noise cancelling turns off or transparency kicks in and you can hear whatever is happening around you. In most cases, a quick conversation. Now I was surprised as to how good this works because it's really snappy. There's barely any delay and it makes this a really useful feature. More useful than any of the other gimmicks that come with those headphones. Like adaptive sound control that learns my location visits supposedly preemptively adapting the sound upon visiting my points of interest and uh, speak to chat which as Sony explains stops the music and lets an ambient sound so I can conduct a conversation. The problem with that is, first off, it is slow to trigger, meaning someone comes in and tells me something. I wouldn't be able to react and hear it and even if I speak back it takes a second to turn on, if it turns on at all. I have probably a 50% success rate with this feature and I wouldn't put it on a resume. Also, coming back to the touch sensitive ear cup, I'm not a fan of it. If I want to use headphones in bed, although sensitivity is much improved 
over the last model, it still leaves this uneasiness in me that I might trigger the voice assistant or something else by accident. Pairing the XM4s is typical for most Bluetooth headphones. You have to long press the power button until you hear the female sound pairing. This time around, the headphones come with the option to be paired with two devices at the same time, which should mimic what Apple has to offer with AirPods, although not as sophisticated. In theory, I should be able to listen to music on my computer, then switch to a phone call when it comes in, and then come back to my music on my computer when done talking. And yes, it works as advertised, but only on two devices, and there's no automated switching, meaning that I have to select on my phone to reroute the sound to the headphones when I answer the call. Kudos to bringing back the music from the computer afterwards. The XM4s can be used as you go, no need to install the dedicated app, but if you want to truly experience their potential and maybe experiment with some of the presets and extra features, then the provided app is a must. Now the app itself is straightforward. I would personally get rid of things that don't work 100% of the time, like for example, I never managed to convince adaptive sound control that I'm no longer staying or sitting on a sofa, and I honestly don't see much of a difference if I analyze my ears or not, aside from the fact that I look like a dork. Okay, all jokes aside, the EQ settings are useful and more useful to me is turning off the touch sensitive control panel. Now calling them kings of noise cancelling is not by accident. The Sonys are great at eliminating the majority of the distracting sounds, however, switching between the ambient sound on and off really makes almost no difference to me, at least the way it's set up out of the box. The ambient sound or transparency mode cannot offer what, for example, the AirPods Max can provide in that department, even with the new number of integrated microphones. See, I don't necessarily hear better the surroundings, but rather hear them as if I have some hearing difficulties. Sort of like trying to eavesdrop on a conversation through a thin wall. For comparison, turning on transparency mode on the AirPods Max feels as if I have super hearing abilities as if I could focus on a slow motion fly buzzing in the other room. Turn on noise cancelling on the Sonys, however, and they really shine. Almost like being in space. Not that I've been there, but you know, it sounds epic. Now the call quality is on par with most Bluetooth headphones. I wouldn't rave about it that much and it really depends on your surroundings while you are on the conversation, but for the most part the person on the other side can expect decent enough quality. Now let's talk about comfort. For the longest of time I considered the old XM2 headphones decently comfortable. That was until I purchased my Audio Technica set, which to me are way better for longer use. The XM4s are technically improved, but I wouldn't say that they have changed much when it comes to comfort. Like I mentioned earlier, although light, I still feel pressure on the tip of my head and for the most part squeezing pressure on my ears which is really annoying. Sure, perhaps it is something to get used to for most people but to me it is a deciding factor and a reason I haven't used my older Sonys unless I really need to isolate myself at home. Battery life is a strong suit for the XM4s. Although Sony claims 30 hours, tests provide some 20% reduction in that number which is still admirable. Keep in mind that the previous model XM3s, which are still available to purchase online, actually are claimed to last a tiny bit longer. But in any case, you won't make a mistake. The price of the XM4s is around $350 and I think that is one of the reasons I would call them overhyped. See there's a lot of competition in that price range and headphones that can offer way better sound quality. Sure, without the noise cancelling, but for far less. Also, for $100 less, you can still get the older Sony XM3 model, which are no slouch when it comes to noise cancellation and supports even more codecs, which as it seems is better for non-Apple users. I'll make sure to put some of my recommendations below, as well as a great article from the sound guys, where you can see in detail the difference between the XM3 and the XM4. Also, we're about to do a blindfold headphones test where we'll ask a bunch of people to rate some of the most popular headphones brands like these exact Sonys and the Apple's latest AirPods Max and many other. So now might be a good time to subscribe to the channel and click on the bell icon. Depending on when you're watching this, if that video is already released, it will be linked in the description below. So what's more important to you? Noise cancelling, comfort or sound quality? Let me know down below. As always, 
It's been an absolute pleasure. This is E, over and out.